بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعليه وصحبه ولا تنسوا ما بعد تقرأوا فيكم Let me this another setting of great benefit and also one that we implement and tomorrow night tomorrow evening will be the last of the, the classes inshallah try to be consistent and also come out for that one inshallah tonight we'll be touching on improving character <laughs> Improving character because without a doubt, we are in a time whereby the Muslims, a lot of them, lack character, basic character, they lack certain etiquettes, they lack certain characteristics of a true believer, a true Muslim. <clears throat> and again, without a doubt, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had the best character. And we should follow him in that. Allah mentions in Surah Al-Qalam, and verily you Referring here to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and verily you are on an exalted standard of character. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam had a true character of a Muslim, of a believer, an exalted standard of character. <clears throat> he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned I was not sent except but to perfect good character he mentioned I was not sent except to perfect character as if the entirety of the deen is based upon having good character. Also, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, <coughs> said, the most perfect believer in respect of faith is he who is best of them in manners. The most perfect of believer is he who has the best manners. Also, they asked again Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her. They asked her, and remember again, she is the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So if they wanted to know certain personal matters, they would go to his wife. They asked her, Ya Umul Mukminin, O mother of the believers, tell me about the character of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her, she said, Have you not read the Quran? And they mentioned, Of course. And then she said, Verily the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet of Allah was the Quran. His character was that of the Quran, meaning that he used to follow the commands and stay away from the prohibitions. Whatever Allah ordered, he would implement it. And whatever was forbidden, whatever Allah forbade, he would stay away from it. Some people try to use logic and say things like, well, why as a Muslim we can't do this? Why the men can't wear gold but the women could wear gold? Why we in Haram? Why this? Why that? 
to break it down simple, plain and clear, we don't need to understand why. We just need to obey. This is the way of a believer. So long as we know Allah say, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, and this is what the salaf were upon, we hear and we obey. We hear and we obey. Understanding is not a part of it. You don't have to understand why pork is haram. And then you need, and you tell somebody pork haram, Allah say, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, and they still doubt it. But then they go up on Facebook or YouTube and they see some video about pig and they say the pig make from dog and rat and all kind of foolishness they're talking. And the pig filthy and the pig is this and the pig is that and then they believe in that. So long as Allah say, you don't need to understand. And again, this is the character of a Muslim. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his character was that of the Quran. Hearing and obey unrestricted. Furthermore, we as Muslims, we obey Allah unconditionally. There is no condition to obey Allah. You don't need to understand why Allah said pray five times a day and not seven or not three or not six or not eight or five or sorry four Allah say pray five times a day we hear and we obey have a certain time and to pray we hear and we obey this is the this is from the best of characters worshiping Allah upon Tawheed and staying away from shirk worshiping Allah upon the Sunnah and staying away from innovation, bidah. Worshipping Allah sincerely upon righteousness and staying away from sin and transgression and oppression. This is from good character. We hear and we obey Allah unconditionally. We hear and we obey the Messenger of Allah unconditionally. Some people like to talk all kind of foolishness about um, Obey Allah and the Prophet وسلم, was just a man. Statements like this could take you outside the fold of Islam. Remember when the crazy man came in the masjid talking about you want to follow the Sunnah and all kind of thing? Yeah? And then he started calling himself a prophet and all kind of madness. Right? Misguidance upon misguidance. Right? Because that is what he chose. When once the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this and that, we follow it. For somebody just to say, well, we only obey Allah and we only obey the Quran and those kind of statements, and they go against what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, then you are going against what Allah said because Allah mentioned obey the Prophet unconditional. He is the one who was given revelation. Right? So, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had the best of character. And he also mentioned again that he was sent to perfect character. And having good character is worshipping Allah alone. If someone is not worshipping Allah alone, they don't have good character. No matter if they tell you good morning, no matter if they, they're so nice, they have a good character towards the creation, but they don't have a good character towards Allah. Understand that. The first and foremost person you should have a good character towards is your Lord. So the disbelievers, all of them, they don't have good character. Even if they're just nice to, the, to you, and they do nice things for you, they don't have a good character towards the one who created them. And if they don't give Allah his rights, do not expect them to give you your rights. We're just doing things not sincerely for Allah. Whatever we do, it is to be done sincerely for Allah. This is from character. Remember, this is Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her. They asked her what was the, the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
she could have just told them, well, you know, he was a nice person, he was kind, he was truthful, you know, he was forgiving. You know, she could have just said, but well, what did she mention? Have you not read the Quran? His character was that of the Quran. What is the main thing in the Quran? The main thing in the Quran is to worship Allah alone. This is from the understanding, the way, the implementation and the interpretation of the Salaf. That from good character is to worship Allah alone. Everything else comes, comes after that. So if someone is not worshipping Allah alone, then they do not have good character. <clears throat> so don't Prophet said nothing will be heavy on the day of resurrection on the scale of the believer than good manners. Allah hates one who utters foul and coarse language. So here the Messenger of Allah mentioned that the heaviest thing on the scale on the day of judgment will be good character. Having good manners, having good etiquettes. This is from character. This is from the way of a believer, of a Muslim. Also, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never struck a servant of his with his hand. Nor did he ever hit a woman. He never hit anything with his hand except for when he was fighting jihad in the cause of Allah. So here, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never struck any of his servants, any of his slaves. This is from good character. He never hit a woman. He never hit a woman. All this is from good manners, this is from good character, this is from good etiquette, this is the way of a Muslim. And he never hit anything with his hand except when he was fighting jihad in the path of Allah. So again, as men, we need to be a little more patient even when dealing with the woman because from good character is not hitting the woman. <clears throat> Imam al-Nawawi and he mentions and Imam al-Nawawi is the one who compiled the famous book for the hadith. What the hadith of Imam An Nawawi. That is a book I wanted to do before the blessing month of Ramadan, but try to do that after, inshallah. In a book where he selected 40 to 42 a hadith, and it is a book that is widely recommended by the scholars. Right? When you ask the scholars, like, what are the books? We should learn from that those who begin to learn Islam what they should learn from. They mention for the hadith of Imam An Nawawi. And Imam An Nawawi he mentioned that the scholars they have said all good character and manners can be derived from four hadith. And this is a khutbah that was given here more than once concerning good character that good character revolves around four ahadith and the first of them he mentioned that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said verily from the perfection of islam is that a person leaves what does not concern him so from good etiquette, from good manners, from the good characteristics of the believer, of the Muslim, is that he leaves that which does not concern him. 
One of the reasons why we have a lot of bacchanal and a lot of fitna is because some people get involved in things that does not concern them. Some people, the fast, the pushy, they had to say something, they had to get involved in people thing. La. You have authorities for that. When it comes to dealing with certain affairs, you have authorities for that. You have an imam. So if something happened, something happened between two brothers, or husband and wife, something that is major, you try to get the <coughs> imam involved. Or they go by the imam with that. Or they go to the imam. Or they find some people they push it, they just push in themselves. They have no authority. Sometimes they don't even have knowledge. And they just get involved and make the situation worse. Sometimes you have somebody who is in charge of something. So let us say we have a a zakat committee or somebody who who lend the money for the masjid or somebody who in charge of the sisters you find some people now want to take it upon themselves and do their own thing getting involved in something which does not concern them you have a matter or a question or something it have somebody in authority. If you in authority, and you have authority, and you are given authority, you deal with the situation. So if you in charge of the sisters, you deal with the situation. But if you not in charge of the sisters, you cannot deal with the situation. If the Imam give you authority to deal with husband and wife situation, then you deal with it. You are given authority. If a matter of security happens and the imam say, well, all right, this brother here in charge of security or whatever the case may be, he in charge, he has authority, please, you want to deal with that. Not everybody take it upon themselves. No one play best security and do their own thing. And then it's all kind of craziness. Part of being a good Muslim is leaving that which does not concern you. The second hadith, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever believes in Allah on the last day, let them speak good or remain silent. Again, from good character, is speaking good or remaining silent. Because you find Many again are the bacchanal and the fitna that happens is because somebody says something out of time. So you might have fitna between the husband and the wife. And it's because he, he tell me this and he should not tell me that. And, and she, she moved sharp and she, she had an answer and she always had the last say. I know if I did say that, you would have get vexed. I know if I did do this and I say that, you would have get vexed. So why you say it? If you believe in Allah and the last day, speak good or remain silent. Because if you utter something which is bad and it causes fitna, it causes an uproar, it does something harmful then remember your Lord if you truly believe in it and the last day when you have to give up count for that so if you truly believe in Allah and you believe Allah is the one who gives blessings and withholds blessings and you believe that Allah is the one who sends punishment and withholds punishment you believe Allah is like this and he's perfect in that, 
is most wise and most powerful in that. You believe in Allah and you believe in the last day, a day when you have to give account for all that you do. So while you might say something bad, you cause a fit and you get away in this life, it have the day of judgment. If you believe in Allah and the last day, speak good or keep silent. Hadith number three. A man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, advise me. And this is from the way of the believers. There are those who like advice. They love advice. They do not turn away from advice because they want to be on the right path. They want to be on the straight path. So if they, they are going wrong, they would like someone to advise, advise them. Because they want to turn away from the wrong and head on the right path. So he came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, advise me. The Prophet وسلم, said, do not get angry the man repeated his request he said advise me the prophet وسلم, said do not get angry the man said again advise me the prophet وسلم, said do not get angry so here from good character, the scholars mention this hadith that from good character is not getting angry. Because when we get angry, we do things and we say things that destroy whatever good it may have. When we get angry, we sort of lose control of the situation. Now, whatever good that could have come about, the anger eats away at that good. Do not get angry. Because when you get angry, you step outside of good character. When you get angry, you step outside of good manners. So if you, if you know that going down that path will get you angry, turn away. This is from the way of the believers. Turn away. Do not get angry. Because you might say something or do something that would cause destruction. It's better you get someone else involved who might be able to cool down and calm down the situation and deal with it. <coughs> if you know you will get angry, anger may bring about a bad judgment whereby you might not be able to, to judge the situation fairly. You might be unjust in the situation. Again, anger would take away from good character. So when you need to judge in that situation because you are angry, you may seem biased. You may seem somewhat judgmental for a lack of better words, meaning that you're not giving a proper judgment, you're just judging due to your anger. So anger again takes away from good character. And the last hadith that he mentioned that the scholars say 
that good character revolves around the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said none of you shall have faith until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself and this here is from good character and to me this here sums up that this hadith here is the best one from good character love for your brother that which you love for yourself but again having good character is not just being manali and saying good morning and saying salam alaikum and having a smile on your face good character is part of belief remember the scholars mention that four hadith revolve around good character remember Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she mentioned that his character was that of the Quran. The Quran, the Quran has what in it? Belief. What we should believe in. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, I have not been sent except but to perfect character. And we know the, the most important thing that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam focused on was what? Tawheed. So Tawheed is a part of perfecting character. But here now, in E. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, I have not been sent except, sorry, he mentioned that none of you truly believes until he loves for his brother that which he loves for himself. None of you truly believes, none of you truly has faith, none of you truly has iman, none of you truly has perfected belief until he loves for his brother that which he loves for himself so from good character from good religion from good belief is loving for your muslim brother that which you love for yourself so from good character what do you love for yourself? You love good things. And you love protection from bad things. So you love this for your brother. This is from good character. Not having evil thoughts about your brother. Not wishing bad for your brother. You want a good wife? You want a good wife for your brother. You don't want a bad wife? You don't want a bad wife for your brother. If your brother need help, you help him because if you need help, you love help for yourself. You at least wish good for your brother. This is from good character. You love for your brother that which you love for yourself. You want good for him. If you see your brother going astray, you want good for him. You love good for him. You want him to be on the straight path. If you see a brother feeling in business, you want a lot to bless his business. You want a lot to uplift his business. You want a lot to increase him in sustenance and goodness. You don't want your brother to fail because you don't love failure for yourself. You love success. You love success for your brother. And it goes the same way for sisters. None of you truly believe until you love for your sister that which you love for yourself. So again, some sisters might have a good husband. And a sister might be single. She need a good husband. Love for your sister that which you love for yourself. You might have a sister and she 
has a bad husband. You make dua for her, your love, that she would have a good husband, that Allah would rectify her marriage. Or well, sister might even know well all right that her brother Suda's function. And they might know well look, her sister need a husband. And this brother, he does always come class, he does come Juma, saying he, he's a proper Muslim. My husband speak good about him. You know, if you want, I could talk to my husband and let him link you with that brother, go to the Imam, you could talk to your wali and, you know, link up the scene. You want a good husband for your sister. You want your sister to have a good home. You want your sister to have righteous children, healthy children. You don't wish bad for your sister. She might be pregnant and you wish any child come out retarded or with Zika or some kind of thing. From good character is having proper Iman, proper belief. And from ha having proper belief is having good thoughts about your brother. You don't want him to feel. If he's the manager of a company, or he's the boss of a company, or he's running a company, you don't want him to lose his job. You want Allah to increase him in that goodness, to solidify his position. You don't want your brother to fail in that company so you now could go and take over that company. Love for your brother that which you love for yourself. And again, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had the best of character. He had the best character. He, he had an exalted standard of character. And his character firstly and mainly and mostly was worshipping Allah alone. How could you have a good character with your mother but you don't have a good character with your Lord? How could you have a good character with your neighbor, but you don't have a good character with your Lord? How could you have a good character with your brother, but you don't have a good character with the one who created you? Understand this. Again, good character is not just saying good morning and helping somebody cross the road. Good character is not just being nice. From good character is having proper belief. He had an exalted standard of character and foremostly his character was based upon Tawheed, worshipping Allah alone. Abandoning shirk, staying away from worshipping anything else besides Allah. Staying away from the different types of shirk. This is what character entails firstly and foremostly. And then you have a good character towards the creation. You give Allah his rights, that is from good character. You stay away from, from transgressing Allah's rights, that is from good character. You give the creation their rights. Your husband have rights, your wife have rights, your children have rights, your parents have rights have rights. Don't tell your neighbors have rights. So much so that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that the angel Jibreel Alayhi Salam used to instruct him concerning the rights of his neighbor so much so much so that he thought the neighbor would inherit from him. The angel Jibreel alayhi salam used to enforce the rights of the neighbor so much. Used to teach him about the rights of the neighbor so much. So much so that he thought that the neighbor would inherit from him. The neighbor have rights. Even those who do not have, have rights. The poor have rights. If you have 
and it bounces off the poor one, they have a right over you. This is from the way of the believers. That we give, we at least give, give a little something. Do not turn them away. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was like that. He never used to turn away anybody empty-handed. This was his character. Worshipping Allah alone, staying away from worshipping anything else besides Allah. He was generous to the people. He was kind. He was sent as a mercy to mankind. He was forgiven. He was generous. He was loving. He was affectionate. He was grateful. He had the best of character. And we need to start learning his character. His adab, his etiquette, his mannerisms. We need to learn it and implement it. And Allah will bless us upon that. It will bring about rectification. <coughs> One of the reasons why we are in the position we are in, a lack of knowledge. And knowledge is like a light, as some of the Salaf mentioned. Knowledge is like light. And with the light, you would see your way. And one of the, the, the greatest deception that the devil has accomplished is getting the people to refrain from knowledge. Because if you don't have knowledge, you don't have the light. And if you don't have the light, you cannot see your way. At least with knowledge, you would know the proper direction. And then it's up to you to walk that direction. This was from the Salaf. So when you see people not engaging upon knowledge, they know that they lack guidance, they lack the light. They will not be able to see their way. So again, may Allah make us from those who emulate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah make us from those who learn the characteristics and the manners and the etiquette and the way, the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Salaf. And may Allah make us from those who practice it sincerely seeking the face of Allah. And may Allah grant us all good in this life and the next. And may Allah protect us from all harm, evil, and punishment in this life and the next. Ameen. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina dhabi naam. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astagfirka wa atuwayhi.